Buenos días. ¿Cómo están? Todos hablan español. Muy bien, gracias. It is a privilege to be here. I think my last time here was a, 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 kind of four years ago, something like that, four years ago. Oh my goodness, it's long, 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 long time. But it's so, so good to, to be here again. And my wife is uh, with me, like the pastor says. And we took advantage of this trip uh, to visit my daughter and my two grandchildren. Uh, and they are my, my son-in-law is a pastor in um, uh, Park, what? Parkview Wesleyan Church in Anderson. Yeah, right, yeah, just a couple hours from here, and we took advantage to spend three days with them. Uh, you know, Grandpa and Grandma, they're very happy to, to hug those little ones, and what wonderful time. We don't, we don't have the opportunity to see them pretty often, but, uh, but it was good. Thank you for inviting me, Pastor, and again, thank you for your prayers and support. Thank you so much. You, you've been so faithful to us uh, with your prayers and support. And uh, as you notice, I, when, when I came four years ago, my English is the same thing. <laughs> oh, lazy missionary, huh? Oh, pronunciation is so hard in, in, in English. And the slangs that you have, phew, many of them doesn't make any sense to me. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah you, you, you say uh, raining cats and dogs? Yeah. Whatever you say, but it's it's really hard, and I'm I'm telling my my North American friends that my very very favorite expression in English is "Yeah, right." <laughs> I, I I love it. I love it. I love it. I can use it with my wife. No, 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 no. Well, but uh, but uh, but it's so sarcastic, right? <laughs> yeah, right. I I I I, I love that. Um, yeah, you have to put uh, all your attention this morning to understand my broken English, okay? But I am going to share what the Lord is doing in Guatemala. Like I says, Happy Tommy's is, is, is growing. Praise God for that is growing. And um, I will say the gift that God gave me, um, it is evangelism. I, I love to tell the story. I love to tell the people about Jesus. I love that. And I told my staff, Hey, staff, listen to this. Uh, social work is good. I am okay with social work, 100%. James uh, tells us a, a lot, a lot of social work. And he says, your, your faith with no works is dead. You need, we need to do works. We need to project outside from the church. I am 100% of that. Yes, yes, yes. But I will say social work, I am very sorry. I don't want to offend you is not priority number one for the church. I will say God call us to tell the world about him, about that there, is a, that there is hope in Jesus Christ. I will say social work, it will be a very nice hook to bring the people to us to tell them about Jesus Christ to the lost. And th th this is why uh, all our ministries Priority number one, it is uh, evangelism. But uh, doing these things with more than 600 kids now, uh, feeding them at, from Monday to Friday, is a beautiful program. If you've been there, you know, um, Michelle and, his, and her husband and many others. How many of you have been in Guatemala before? Are you coming back next month? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of some of you are coming ne coming back next month. Yes, and um, the Nora start thinking says how we can help uh, uh, the moms of these children. Well, the children comes every day. They have a Bible story, and I have thirty minutes, right? And uh, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, I love you more. <laughs> no, <laughs> and per, per, yeah, I, I remember a, a few a few years ago. Well, uh, my daughter was away from uh, Indiana Wesleyan, and they invited me to preach for the graduation ceremony in Indiana Wesleyan. But when I got the letter from the president of the co of college, they says, uh, Pastor Martinez, can you please preach just seventeen minutes? 
And I said, oh my goodness, 70 minutes. And I was, I, was, I was driving to college and Sarah, my assistant, says, Luis, everybody's praying for you here in the office because she knows that she knew that I was so nervous to preach in English and they would go to the ceremony and, call, and, and I would. And when I came, to, uh, my daughter came to me and says, Daddy, Daddy, please, please, 17 minutes, no more than that, okay? <laughs> 17 minutes. And, but I, I will try to use the other 29 minutes that I have. Uh, they come every day, and we teach a Bible story every day. Uh, they memorize verses. We uh, provide um, um, vitamin, children vitamin, and then uh, we serve a nutrition lunch. After the nutrition lunch, uh, we clean up the tables, and we say, okay, guys, come back to the tables again. And they, they, school in Guatemala, Elementary school in Guatemala goes from 7 a.m. through 1 p.m. And that means and they come, yeah, 1, 1.15 1 uh, to there. And they stay on till 4 o'clock because after the lunch, we call them back to the tables and we do homework to, together. Um, because the malnutrition, uh, right, uh, I don't know if you heard in CNN, uh, I don't know if you like CNN, but anyway, uh, I, I, we heard that Guatemala now is the third country with the highest malnutrition in the world. And that is, uh, that, is, that is very bad because they don't concentrate well in the school. And we start asking for report cards to them uh, three and a half years ago. We noticed that maybe 87% of, the, uh, of them, they, did, they, did, they, they, they never pass uh, socials, uh, Spanish, science, math, it was a mess, mess, mess. Praise God, two months ago, the last report cards that we had, because we do homework with them, uh, I will say 91% of them pass, I'm sorry, uh, I, I need to pay, oh. Oh. I don't know how to do this. Okay, 97% uh, of them pass all the classes. And uh, praise God for that. Uh, and then, uh, amen, to God be the glory. And uh, then the Nora start thinking, okay, what, what we can do with the moms? And uh, he, she says, oh, uh, have you heard, uh, don't give them the fish, but teach them how to fish? Okay, this is exactly what she start doing. And it says, how about we teach them uh, how to sew, how to, to use the sewing machine? Because if they can use the sewing machine, they can help their husbands uh, with that extra little income. And the first year, it was a great idea, but it, it was a terrible and bad uh, logistic. We ask sewing machines to our churches and support us here in the States. We send emails. And guess what? We had 30 machines the first year, five years ago. Five and a half years ago, something like that. We were so excited. When we set up all these sewing machines, the owner says, oh my goodness, how I'm going to teach them how to sew because all the machines are different. <laughs> can, you, can you imagine, push this button? Which button? <laughs> Say, but praise God, a lady from Iowa, she says, I do, do you know what, Dinora, next year, don't ask uh, machines. Ask for money, and we are going to buy the machines, the same machine, and that would be so easy to teach how to sew. Well, the, the following year was so beautiful. Uh, the machines that you buy for $500, uh, we got a good con connections in Guatemala. We can buy it for 319 I think it is. Uh, 319, and if you if you can uh, if you can help us with one sewing machine every year, because if they finish the whole year with uh, doing the homework and everything in October, we give them uh, the diploma, but also we give them the machine to take home with them, and. It is so beautiful because many of them, they learn how to do the Mayan blouses already, and they are sending the Mayan blouses, some of them are sending to here to the States, and they are making much, much more, 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 more money than their husband, which is, which, which is, is a wonderful thing. And, but in the morning, because the, the building is empty, and all these kids coming on to one o'clock, we says, how about we start another, another ministry? Do you understand the word abuelitos? Abuelitos means little grandparents. 
And we have 56, 50 something abuelitos coming every day to eat breakfast with us. And these abuelitos, they don't have children to take care of them. They don't have, they don't have families and they come to eat breakfast with us. And oh my goodness, they pass, uh, they, they spend a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time together. And some doctors, North American doctors, than being in Guatemala before, they taught our teachers uh, the very basic uh, exercise, therapy exercise things uh, to do with abuelitos. Uh, with 99% of them, they are not believers yet. They are not. And uh, with all my respect with you, uh, actually, in the very beginning, they got very mad to me because uh, when I says, okay, you're ready to pray for breakfast, let's pray. Uh, Father, thank you for breakfast in the name of Jesus. Amen. And they got so mad and says, uh, Pastor Luis, you never pray in the name of Virgin Mary. And he says, the Father says, the Catholic Father says, then we can't talk to Jesus without Mary has been very hard to explain little by little, little by little, little by little, and we have seen some of them coming to the Lord. But I told my staff, do you know what a staff? They are this close to start the last trip, the last journey in, in, in their lives. The question is where they are going to spend eternity. Do you know what I'm saying? It is, it is not my responsibility what they are going to spend eternity, but it's my responsibility to tell them that there is a better place to spend eternity. And that way is Jesus Christ. And this is what we are doing with this, with, with these abuelitos. In the very beginning, my passion was to train pastors and leaders. The thing is, we start planting churches in the mountains. Really, really, Pastor, it is 17 churches in the last 10 and a half years. But in the last few months, nine brand new churches. But I noticed that 90% of my pastors in the mountains, they never finish high school. 75% of them never finish elementary school. I have three church planter pastors. They can't read and write. And maybe it's a shock for you in North America. Let me tell you something. I never, I, I, I don't know until today about a seminary that make pastors. The pastor call comes from God, not from the seminary. And these three guys, they have the call and they have the passion to go ahead and tell people about Jesus and to start churches and we we are behind them and I says we went to the seminary with um, people on my staff and says how about if we, if, we, if we can bring the seminary to them and the regular basis well you also started teaching one class there one class one class there but anyway the seminary that I attend I call and says just in case, do you have something for people that never finish a high school? No. Do you have? Of course, seminaries, seminaries, uh, college level. And actually, now it's worse and worse and worse than before. That big seminary in Guatemala City. Because if for first timers, if you want to go to that seminary, uh, you need to have at least 26 credits of any college career. Says, my students, my pastors? They never finished high school. Praise God, last year, uh, uh, I don't know what you say in English, the director of the president, of the, uh, the guy that is in charge of curriculum, of all the classes, he called me and says, Luis, guess what? We, the faculty, just approve a special program for people that never finish high school or elementary school. And he said, yes. And I went to his office and he showed me all these classes, and especially for people in homiletics, hermeneutics, uh, New Testament, Old Testament, uh, all those classes in that level. And they, they will be willing to give us credit. And guess what? Last January, we start officially our first Wesleyan Bible Institute. And the name of the institute is Instituto Biblico Nueva Vida. Do you understand that? New Life Wesleyan Bible Institute. That is our, our institute. And 
Five years ago, I started teaching just 17 uh, pastors and leaders. Every, every month, every month, every month, 17. I, I did, well, I don't know if it was a mistake or not. Uh, I did uh, something that Jesus did, uh, but I don't know how to say in English. Mm, it's, it's tragedy? Say again, sir? Oh, whatever he says, okay? Uh, can you tell again? It was Jesus? Yes. Because when he healed people, you remember when he healed the ten leprosies? He says, shh, don't say anything. It was a good? Why? Because when he says, don't say anything, it was the first thing that they did. When you know, for people to know your secrets, tell them, don't say anything. Oh, yeah, it, that works very well. Yes. And I, to, I told my 17 pastors and says, hey, guys, don't say anything because my wife was preparing lunch for them for free, breakfast for free, a snack for free. And I was, I don't know how. But sometimes from our pockets, from our savings, trying to buy books for the 17 of them and giving books every class and photocopies and that kind of things. And I says, don't say anything. Guess what? Right now, we have 72 students. <laughs> yes. And we start the Bible Institute. And a couple from Iowa came and it says, well, Pastor Luis, there is two things in here. You don't have a place to meet with the 72 students of the Bible Institute, but also uh, how many meals the abuelitos, the little grandparents eat every day. And he says, just one. He says, why? Because at one o'clock, you know, more than 56 of these little ones come and they can kill the abuelitos. <laughs> and I says, oh, 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 that's right, that's right. This couple from Iowa gave us the money, to make it short, gave us the money to buy a beautiful piece of land. And they says, Pastor Luis, uh, we want to give you this piece of land to build the Abuelito side. And with the rest of the land, you can do whatever you want. And says, yes, Bible Institute. And we start building already the new home for Abuelitos. Uh, they are going to stay the whole day, and they, are going to, uh, they will be able to eat the three meals a day, um, breakfast, lunch, and snack, and maybe supper. And, but also, we are going to have a beautiful place to start uh, to build the uh, Bible Institute, Nueva Vida, Instituto Biblico Nueva Vida. And do you know what? Can you see this? This is the blocks that we are going to use. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I found, I, found, I found this block and I decided to buy it. And I says, oh, I'm going to tell the church, do you know what? Church, if you want to pray for the Bible Institute uh, and the Abuelitos uh, home, you can buy one of these for $5. And guess what? With $5, I can buy 11 of the real ones. Yeah, you can help me to build that building, that, that Bible Institute. Thank you so much. Please come to Guatemala and see what the Lord is doing there. And spend a day with those little ones with happy tummies, with abuelitos, and with the sewing machine. If you sew, uh, you can come and help the Nor Yeah. Bring her, please. <laughs> yes, yes. Everybody that like to sew, you can come and help us with that. And I promise to tell you, to tell you something about, about my dad. Uh, he is going to be... 100 years and two months. He is in a wonder, wonderful shape. His mind, much better than my mind, I think. He reads, he decided to go and read his Bible and go through the whole Bible every year. Guess what, last, last year, in March, last year, he, told me, he called me and says, I finished once already. And he did three and a half last year. Three times and a half. And to, uh, until today, he reads almost three, four hours every single day his Bible. He was a pastor for maybe 67 years. He remember in his files that he started 53 churches in, in his life. But the, he is one of my biggest motivation to start this Bible Institute. Because he never, ever went to the school in his life. 
never. He wore his very first pair of shoes when he was 19 years old. He came to the Lord when he was 12. He saw the first couple of missionaries, white people from the States coming to Guatemala. And he ran away from the car because he thought the car was going to eat him. But the missionary established their home in that village and his village. And they start preaching and he came to the Lord. And he really, 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 you have no idea how much he fell in love with Jesus. It's his biggest passion. And two and a half months ago, my mom passed away. Four, uh, 95 years old. And one day after she passed away, I asked my dad and says, Daddy, do you want to go with me to the mountains and to live with me? And he says, yes, I don't want to go back to the same house. I don't want to go to the same room and to sleep in the same bed. And since that time, my daddy is with me in the mountains and right there in, in, in the Lake Atlanta. But let me tell you, has been another seminar with him because he says, sit down. Let's talk about the Bible. Okay, two or three hours. And I, I think I am ready for my master's degree now. <laughs> but in two months, we are going to celebrate the 100 years. And talking with him, it says, hey, da he asked me, says, hey, son, do you want to preach in that celebration for the 100 years? Uh, of, uh, yeah. And I says, yes, daddy, but can you tell me what is your favorite passage in the, in the Bible? And, I, and he says, I have two. And one of them is in the book of Hosea, Hosea chapter 6. And this verse says, this is why my people has been destroyed, because the lack of knowledge of God. I will repeat it to you if you promise to me to process this in your mind. This is why. There is not another reason. It is not because my mother-in-law, my neighbor, my neighbor's dog. No. This is why my people has been destroyed because the lack of knowledge of God. Did you get that? Do you, do you know what I, what I found on the internet? I found on the internet that 84% of the believers around the world, they don't spend five minutes with God every day. 84% of the believers around the world. And that includes pastors, leaders, and people like you and me. And then we, we sing, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, it's a big lie. Because if we love somebody, we want to spend time with that person. Yes or not? If I love Jesus, I want to spend time with him. But the, please don't sing, how uh, Oh, how much I love Jesus if you don't spend five minutes with him. And my dad says, son, you need to spend more time with Jesus. And that is every single day. Son, you need to spend more time in this book. You need to spend more time on your knees. And one of the chapters that he gave me just a few days ago, it was, uh, this is, the, ch the chapter where, where he wants for me to preach and, and his um, birthday in two months. Psalm 103. If you have your Bibles, Psalm 103. Because 100 years old. 100 years old now. And, and this, this verse says, Praise the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Do you know that song? Praise the Lord, oh my soul. All my in must be, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then I can invite you this afternoon to get a piece of paper in your house and a pen and start writing his benefits to you. But David says, 
one of those, the, the most beautiful benefits, verse 3. Who forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. And talking with, with my daddy, it says that means that you believe in, in healing, in holy healing, dad, dad. And he says, do you know what? If you try to study more, it's not talking about the physical. It's, yeah, it includes that. But it, it, it talks more about here. How much problems do you have and f forgive? Do you know what? My dad says he is the only one that has the only abil the ability. He is the only one that have the ability than to forget. He forget my sins. He forgive my sins, but also he forget. We don't have that ability. Unfortunately, it would be so good if we have that ability to forget what happened in the past. And let me finish with this, because he says, son, and you need to finish your sermon <laughs> and this, <laughs> and I will. Psalm 107, 107, and it says, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. My New International Version in Spanish says his mercy endures forever. And do you know what those mercy means? Mercy comes from the Greek and three different words. And mercy is, means miserable. The second is in Spanish, misericordia. Cor means heart. And dia, mercy, misericordia, means go. That means that he goes to the misery of your heart. And his misery endures forever. And he says, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy, his love endures forever. Let, who needs to say that? Listen, let the redeem of the Lord to tell the story. Those he redeemed from the hand of the folk. Who is those? You and me, church. We need to tell people because I've been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much. We love you. Just help us to tell this story because we've been redeemed and now other people need to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb and the beautiful, precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Please stand together as we, as we close. I was asking myself during this message, um, what, is it that, what is it that North America is missing? Why can so many places have stories of churches being planted nine in a few months and uh, we have so much resource. We don't lack seminaries. I've been mulling it over in my mind for the last few minutes. We have probably more resources in our nation than any place in the world. Yeah. Isn't it incredible? Right. And there are tons and tons of people who don't know Jesus. And so I just wonder where the disconnect is between that amount of resource and that mission and that kind of life. I don't know what it is for you, but I think the thing that's so often missing for me in that equation is just courage. You could also probably say faith to recognize what God is doing and to just step into it. So I pray as you go, you would go with courage. Once God opens your eyes to see the opportunities around you, that you'd have the courage to step in faith and 
Just let him do something through you. If you have a prayer request or something you'd just like to pray with somebody about, there'll be a couple people here right after we do our sending. You're welcome to come up and pray with them. If you'd like to say hi to Pastor Luis in English or Spanish, he'll be up here and you can come and uh, say hi to him or if you'd like him to pray for you, he'd love to do that as well. If you're a guest with us, please don't forget to take a gift we have with you home. And next week, 10 a.m., 10 a.m., not 9. You'll be here way too early, 10 a.m. Now may the love of God, the peace of Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Spirit be with you as you go. You are sent.